So outside your classroom, outside your classroom, um, a lot of study abroad is you're going to be taking classes. Uh, we treat ourselves very much as an academic program. We have very high academic expectations for all of you. But we all know that studying abroad is very different than studying here on campus. Here on campus, you make friends, you join clubs, you live in the dorms, maybe for one year or two years, and you have a great time, but it's very much an American experience. And you get a lot of an American experience just by living here, by growing up here, uh, whether it's Merced or LA or some other place. But when you're studying abroad, it's very different. Uh, and we want you to take advantage of the learning opportunities, the learning opportunities for which you're probably not going to get a grade for. But you want to focus on things like learning about your, your host culture. Maybe you get to, to, to um, make friends with your, with your classmates, or in some cases, you have to basically hang out with students at maybe a, a student union, or you're connecting with a host family. Uh, you're taking a cooking class, something where you get to, to engage more deeply rather than spending all of your time with American friends. You, you might only have two months or six months or, or nine months to really spend in your host culture. And yeah, you can do all those sorts of American things when you get back. But you're going to have some very unique opportunities while you're abroad to, to really gain a lot, of, a lot of personal experiences, a lot of learning opportunities that you wouldn't otherwise have. And it's all because you're studying abroad, and you may not have another opportunity like this again to be able to spend six or nine months or however long you're going to be abroad to be able to do this again and get financial aid or to make it work with your career. So as much as you can, try to work with that local language. I mean, if, you, if you're going to be studying abroad and you're going to be studying in a country where they don't speak English, and most of you are actually in that situation, try to practice the language. You, you never know how far it's going to go in terms of asking for directions or ordering food in a restaurant and even trying a couple words in Thai or a couple words in Italian and really trying to connect even at the smallest level for language and how much how, how rewarding that will be for you personally and how much more that encourages you to keep learning and keep doing things outside the classroom and enriches your experience. So another thing is you, you want to be as respectful as possible to your host culture. You want to be respectful um, in terms of you, you want to tread kind of lightly and uh, be very uh, observe your local culture as much as possible. Try to participate as much as possible. But at the same time, you, you, you really are there somewhat as a spectator um, and rather than trying to change your, your, your host country's cultures and customs. Uh, and so be there, be respectful, but be there and be ready to learn. Uh, again, we want you to try new things. Uh, there were so many things when I studied abroad and when I traveled abroad where I got to try new foods, foods that I never knew that you could actually eat and consume and would be healthy for you, uh, or at least would give you any sort of nutritional value. And some of them are the most amazing foods I've ever had. Japan definitely comes to mind when I think of that. Um, but also, um, uh, because you're Americans, and Americans tend to be loud, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, soon, um, you, you want to be a little bit more reserved sometimes in your behavior, especially if you're kind of a loud person, especially if you like to draw attention to yourself. Um, this might go for safety, but it also goes for connecting with your host culture and, and getting the most out of your experience. So sometimes, especially in public, uh, you might want to be a little bit more reserved if you're more of an outgoing person and, and try to observe a little bit more maybe than, than try to be the center of attention. So during your program, um, one of the things that you're going to be doing is you're kind of winding down. Uh, and winding down for some students is kind of scary. Other students are kind of looking forward to it. Uh, you want to start preparing for returning to UC Merced, or at least returning back to California. So if you're going to be returning to UC Merced, uh, you want to uh, register for your courses. So most of the time, uh, you are going to be registering for your courses before you actually return from abroad. So you'll probably be doing your course registration, excuse me, your course registration online, and you want to pay attention to your registration times, to your pass times for class registration. Excuse me. If you are going to be going abroad for the year, especially, you want to apply for financial aid. So particularly for the FAFSA, and if you're going to be going to to take classes over the summer, and you're a year-long students year-long students, but say summer of 2013, you'll probably also be doing a summer financial aid application online. Uh, for some of you, you might be thinking about housing. So how am I going to secure housing from abroad? Maybe you're only going for a semester and you're going to try to squeeze back into the dorms just because that's a little more convenient in the spring semester. Other students might be looking at 
how do I sign a housing contract from abroad? And so you might want to make some of those connections even now with maybe students that you're going to be living with, uh, say, during 2013-14. I know it's a long ways out, but sometimes you need to plan ahead. Um, and again, you want to verify your travel information and dates, so your flight information, make sure you don't miss your return flight home. As much as you might really like studying in Spain, you may not want to be stuck there for another year. 